for us. Tonight we are very pleased to have two presenters. And I will have Jenny to introduce the two presenters to all of you. And by beginning, and I think Jenny will introduce a little bit brief bio for both presenters. So tonight's workshop is about nutrition. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have some sampling of our food tonight. Mostly unhealthy, <laughs> but you know, I think we have one dish is a little bit more healthy. So without any delay, I pass it on to my colleague, uh, Jenny. <coughs> So Joseph is a naturopathic doctor who brings a blend of conven conventional medical sciences and traditional health philosophies into his practice. So, um, so it actually, uh, so, actually, so it actually allows him to see a person's health from from different points of view. So he has an undergraduate degree in biology and often looks to clinical research, to, uh, clinical research to support treatment options for his patients. And Joseph sees himself not only as a doctor but also as, but also as but also as an educator. With so much conflicting medical information, he educates his patients on all treatment options to ensure him and his patients can together make the best informed decisions for his patient's health. And um, as a side, he also he has lived in Taiwan for seven years. So anyone want to speak Mandarin with him, please? <laughs> and Michelle. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle is actually a registered nutritionist with over eight years of specialized experience helping clients take a holistic approach to maintaining a healthy diet and lifestyle. She is a graduate of the Canadian School for Natural Nutrition and the, and the University of Toronto's Medical Anthropology Specialist Program. She has counseled clients with a wide variety of medical conditions including HIV AIDS, endometriosis, diabetes, food allergies, and digestive tract disorders. She's passionate about how views of health and, and nutrition differ across cultures. Her studies in medical anthropology actually took her to a hospital in northern Nambia, where she studied geopolitical obstacles local residents faced when, it, when, uh, when accessing nutritious food and how access to food impacted HIV transmission and patient outcomes. So without further ado, Michelle and Joseph, please take it away. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out and listening to us talk tonight about nutrition. We're both very passionate about it. Um, we have a couple of objectives tonight, what we want you to learn from this talk. So first of all, we want to talk about nutrition and how, uh, how to use it for people living with HIV to help improve your immune system, help you feel healthier, and probably more energetic too. Next, I want to talk to you about the digestive system. So how it works, talk about some of the common complaints of the digestive system, and uh, we'll be able to give you some suggestions, maybe to help alleviate some of the symptoms you may experience. And then lastly, we're going to take the nutrition and the digestion and put it together so you know how to use it every day. So, background. Obviously, what is HIV and what is uh, AIDS? Um, because we are going to focus most of this around HIV support, not AIDS. And there's a reason for that. Okay? So, HIV is a virus. Uh, it's a virus that attacks the immune system and that leads to the killing of the white blood cells, our immune system. And when our white blood cells go down, we reach a state called AIDS, right? And that is uh, an acquired autoimmune deficiency syndrome. If it, was, if it happened nowadays, I can tell you it would not be called a syndrome nowadays. It would be called a, a disease but, or infection. But what's important to know here, for a person with HIV, we want to bring up the immune system. With a person with AIDS, if you bring up the immune system too fast, you're giving food to the virus. 
and the virus will become stronger. Mm. Right? So, in fact, we have herbs or nutrition that can bring up the immune system, but you need to know what's happened. So you have to be careful. So that's why we say we're treating HIV. What's also important to say is this, all of our talk, is support for conventional medicine. There are times where naturopathic medicine or nutrition can replace <coughs> pharmaceutical medications. Unfortunately, this is not one of those circumstances. Here, we need to uh, use this natural medicine as a, a complement. Thank you. Two things we can do. We can help support the HIV person with the immune system directly with HIV and then we can also support the things that come. Maybe uh, a chest cold. Maybe um, side effects of the medication. Whether that's uh, weakening of the bones or digestive problems. Some things, we have this word here. Let's see if I can go, no. So this word, ah, oh, I can use my shadow. We can use this word, candida. I want to be careful with that word. Because if you go talk to, or you read, a lot of naturopathic doctors and nutritionists talk about this being a problem. But for someone who does not have age, this is very different. Someone who has AIDS, this is a more serious, very serious medical condition. Someone who has HIV and has candida, this is a, a, a yeast, a cell that has come into the body and now is traveling through the blood and is very dangerous. Someone like Michelle and I who don't have HIV, it's just something in the digestive system. Not a big deal. So yeast is like a mushroom, but in this case it's only one cell. Like a fungus, but it's like one cell. So like in the bathroom we have uh, the, the fungus, the mold. So it's kind of like a virus, but not the same. Okay. And, and I'm going to say, so the difference is HIV is a virus, and helping the body take care of a virus is very different than helping the body take care of bacteria, or helping the body take care of yeast. They're very different living organisms. We need to keep the immune system up and keep these things under control. And if you take a little bit of effort now to keep it under control, no problem. But if it goes up, it becomes a medical emergency. For medical emergency, only for HIV or AIDS people. Person who is HIV and gets very sick, you're gonna have a high fever if this is a problem, you're going to go to the hospital. If you don't have a problem, and HIV people can have a problem with it in the digestive tract as well, just like uh, other people, and that's going to lead to bloating, gas. Let me, let me explain yeast. Do you know how to make beer? Yes. You, what do you add? Yes. You add yeast, Yes. right? So you think what happens in beer? Bubbles, smell, we end up with a lot of gas, we end up with a lot of uh, diarrhea, we end up with a lot of nausea, yes. problems here. Anyone has done any baking and you've used yeast, what do you add to make the yeast grow? Sugar, right. So that's the same idea in our bodies. If we are having a diet high in sugar, we're feeding that yeast. And that's when it can become a problem. A little problem can become a big problem, but all big problems start off small. So if you take care of it early on, not a problem. More specifically, we're talking about prevention with diet and lifestyle. So as Dr. Steyer said, the type of medicine we're talking about is food as your medicine and lifestyle, because these are two things that are in your hands and you can control. You can control what you eat. Basic, what is the food? What is inside a food? 
Uh, first word, carbohydrates. So rice, bread, bread noodle, potatoes. potatoes, or even bananas, sugar. I'm not, I'm not saying good or bad, I'm telling you what a carbohydrate is. All carbohydrates in the body become sugar. So bread is like a big piece of sugar. Protein is meat, tofu, but sometimes in dairy, like cheese can have a cottage cheese. Milk. Right? Milk can have some. Eggs. Eggs is actually a very good protein, yes. It, the good example is meat becomes meat. Muscle. Meat becomes muscle. It's important to understand meat is not turning into sugar. So it's not going to feed candida, it's not gonna do other effects on our body. Fat, butter, <laughs> vegetable oil, oil, white part. Yes. Yeah. Olive oil is fat, butter is fat, coconut oil. Yeah. All this, anything oil. <clears throat> now, two categories. One, if you put it on the table and it stays like one solid piece butter or uh, fat from a steak, that's, that's different. Then we have liquid which is oil, and so here we talk about the good fats and the bad fats. Oil generally is good. Vegetables has a little bit of protein, but vegetables are different. I'm gonna say they are vitamins and minerals, plus fiber. So they're, they're in a different category. Fruit, what would you put that? Would you put that in carbohydrate? So fruit would be carbohydrate, yeah. Fruits and vegetables are a carbohydrate, but they are also loaded with vitamins and minerals as well. So they have more than just sugar. They also are a source of fiber, uh, especially vegetables, a really good source of fiber. <laughs> so talking about carbohydrates, there's different types of carbohydrates. So does anybody know what a carbohydrate food turns into in our body when we eat it. And that could be a piece of bread, rice, turns into, it, but it's a specific kind of fuel. Sugar, exactly. So when carbohydrates are broken down by the body, they turn into sugar. And this sugar gives us energy. But we don't want a quick burst of energy because we'll have energy and we get tired after. We crash because our body wants to stay in balance. So if we have a sugar spike, then our body is going to reduce that. We produce insulin and it lowers our blood sugar. So especially any people with diabetes, you don't want the sugar spike. So foods that give us, or carbohydrates, that give us a sugar spike, we refer to them, just to be very easy and simple, it's bad, bad carbs. So this is your white foods, white flour, uh, cookies, pastries, even white rice, unfortunately, because it's being processed, the nutrients have been removed, so that quickly becomes sugar in our bodies. So again, when we have these carbohydrates, we'll probably notice we get hungry again soon because it's very quickly digested. On the other hand, good carbohydrates, and I have some examples up here. Good carbohydrates, we also call them complex carbohydrates. They're complex, there's more in them, so it takes longer for your body to break down. There's more fiber, there's a little bit of protein, and there's the vitamins and minerals in them as well. So it takes your body longer to break them down, which means sugar is released slower, and you have a very steady stream of energy. Now you'd notice a difference if you had, say, just something with white flour, um, maybe a sandwich with white bread, 
as opposed to having something with beans, uh, maybe beans and rice mixed together. There's more fiber. You'll notice you feel full for a bit longer. And you won't get hungry so soon. So these are some examples of complex carbohydrates. So these are good carbohydrates. Um, beans, different types of beans, very high in fiber. Um, quinoa. Now quinoa is also a good source of protein. It's a grain from South America. Uh, so quinoa and tofu are the only two sources of protein for vegetarians because they're not from animals. So all foods have protein, but the full complement of protein can be found in quinoa and in tofu. So quinoa, anyone who wants to try and get more complex carbohydrates can maybe try substituting white rice with quinoa or even brown rice. As long as it has more nutrients in it, so it's going to take your stomach longer to break it down. You also get more out of it. And then of course, vegetables. Lots and lots of vegetables. Beans and nuts themselves can be, they're kind of a bit of both of the fat and um, uh, protein. Soybean, tofu, um, soy milk, is all high in protein. But she's saying, what she's saying is, Try to use something like this over white rice. So sugar, now this is protein. So white rice is sugar, quinoa is protein. Even though tofu comes from soy, it's still, tofu is processed. Right. So it is more of a protein product than I would think of as a carbohydrate product. So two things, sugar, feeds the bad guys in our gut, candida, or E. coli, or clostridium, these bad things in our gut. And as you said, I don't know where you got that from, very, very smart. It, sugar, for two hours after you have a lot of sh uh, sugar, your immune system goes down. Now if you have sugar every two hours, your immune system's always down. A person with a weak immune system has lots of sugar, their immune system that's much weaker, right? But then you do lots of other things to try and raise your immune system, you kind of trade, off. trade them off. <laughs> diet was designed, traditional diet was designed for people living 200 years ago and they exercised every day, all day. I don't exercise that much. I don't know about you, I wish I exercised that much, but I don't. It's the same thing for people who do juicing so we're, we're juicing because we want to get the nutrients, but what we're actually doing is removing the fiber and just making a very high sugar drink. There are nutrients in it as well, but fruit, the way it comes in nature is basically the way we should be eating it, with the exception of things that, you know, like an orange, we're peeling it off, but apple, uh, pear, peach, I've seen those in cans. If you look at the sugar amount in it, it's very, very high and you're not getting as much fiber out of it. So in the end, all you're really getting is just a high dose of sugar. Nature never made orange juice. It made an orange. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing you have to be careful about with canned food is the lining. There can be a toxin in the lining that um, it can affect your hormone balance. So some of them will say BPA free. So if you're going to buy canned food, especially beans, you want to make sure it says BPA free on the can. And also check the sodium content. It's tricky because the way the nutrition label will say the can might be 200 milligrams, but the nutrition label is only 100 milligrams. So you look at it, it says 400 milligrams of sodium and you're using it, but that's only for half the can. So you think, oh, okay, that's low in sodium, but then you end up using the whole can and it's double the amount. So when you make it from scratch yourself, the sodium content will be much lower. It'll just depend on how much you add to it. So that's the caution for using canned food. I mean, 
In an ideal world, we would have enough time to prepare foods from scratch, but we don't. So we just need to read the labels very carefully and make sure it says BPA free. Organic, whole vegetable is best. Not always easy. Okay, whole vegetable, but not organic. Okay, canned vegetable. <laughs> but is canned vegetable better than no vegetable? Yeah, for sure. So you're gonna do the best you can. There's, I mean, we can talk like this for many hours. Why is different? Any vegetable is better than no vegetable. <laughs> Nothing is like the real thing. <laughs> if you're doing a smoothie and you're using the whole fruit, so juicing, it removes the fiber from it. Right. But when you make a smoothie, people throw the whole fruit in and yeah. blend it up. Right. And then you can add a protein powder. You can even add some ground flax to get some more fiber. And so it's not just sugar that's in the... So smoothie is a little bit different than juicing because you tend to use the whole fruit. You're not choking away. Yeah, you're not throwing away the fiber. Nothing is like the real thing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but if you have a weak digestive system, what do you do to heal that? Remember I said protein for the muscle? Yeah, okay, yes. Do you want to look like this? No, it's not that important. Protein equals your immune system. Anybody is a protein made from your immune system. You need the building blocks. If you're making a house and you have bricks, the bricks is protein. Inside of your house is a fire to keep you warm. That's carbohydrates. You fill up the holes and you make things kind of soft. That's oil. Protein really is the pieces to make your body. Hair, muscle, immune system, protein are the pieces. Protein equals our white blood cells. It's kind of interesting. There's a North American tradition when somebody's not well, we give them chicken noodle soup. Why is that? Well, the chicken is a source of protein. And often when we have that, we feel better. Maybe before we didn't realize why, but chicken noodle soup, and some people say, oh, you're not well, get, have orange juice to drink to get the vitamin C. But now we've just talked about that, that's pure sugar. So what's that gonna do? It's going to slow your immune system down. We tend to feel better when we have these soups, chicken, something with protein in it. We're, we'll notice we recover much faster. Uh, I know in Chinese tradition, after a woman has a baby, often um, depends on chicken soup. Yeah, chicken soup or a whole chicken, a lot of chickens for many days. Same idea, right? Heal the body. Traditionally, cattle weren't so fat. The way North Americans eat beef, there's quite a lot of fat on it. And if we look at traditional diets, they ate wild game. It didn't have quite the same amount of fat. But we do that on purpose. So the cows, they're given a diet that's high in carbohydrates to make them fat because it tastes better for us. They're in close quarters, so they get sick often, so they get antibiotics. They give them growth hormones, so they grow faster, they can sell that meat and get it to market. So all those things that are going on with the cow, when we eat the beef, we're, we're eating all those things as well. Um, it is high in fat. Um, the, the way they process it as well. Um, you know, for people that want to eat beef, we recommend, you know, minimizing it as much as possible and looking for healthier choices. Organic, <laughs> organic grass-fed. Grass-fed is better. Uh, cows are, are only meant to eat grass. Um, but when we raise them in these small barns, they're not given grass, they're given something else. So the quality of the beef is not going to be as good. So if you can afford to buy it, unfortunately it's more expensive. To answer some of the questions there, what was the best protein? The answer to the best protein is variety. Red meat, like beef, has fat in it that's bad fat, but that's kind of old, This the science is changing now. Um, it changes the the acid, P 
pH of our body, this can be bad. We can go down a very long conversation. What I want to say here, don't eat beef every day. Don't eat chicken every day. Don't eat tofu every day. Don't eat eggs every day. Variety is your answer. And this is, this is going to be the easiest way to stay healthy. Variety is the answer. Because red meat is going to give you iron. And it's very important for energy and people living with HIV as well. And it does not just give energy, it helps with the mood. It helps with making something we call serotonin and dopamine. Without getting too scientific, variety is the, my answer. Good and bad? What's the good and bad? Saturated and unsaturated. This is actually changing. Yes. This is some modern researchers saying. The, the answer to this is, you should exercise, <laughs> okay? All fat is good if you exercise. But, this is good. It's good because it has unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats, talking about HIV again, what is that doing for a person with HIV? It's reducing the inflammation in the body and helping balance the immune system. Olive oil, olive oil is a vegetable, yes, but it's not the same as vegetable oil. What would you say around vegetable oil, good or bad? I'd say it's bad, I mean, but there's a number of reasons for it. Um, it tends to go off very quickly. The way it's processed will make it go off. By the time, by the time you buy it in the grocery store, it's pretty well already rancid. It's gone off. Uh, there's a number of things, reasons why. Uh, it needs to be stored in a dark container. Really, the healthiest source of oil is olive oil. Grape seed oil, good. Yeah. They're very expensive. They're very expensive. So, what I'm going to say is, if you're going to spend money, extra money, one spot, extra virgin olive oil in a dark jar because fat is very sensitive to temperature and to light so when it's in a glass container the light will get to it and it will go off olive oil is the one oil you should use but we talked about coconut oil so what i'm going to say is olive oil is not for cooking not for cooking salad in a soup Anywhere else is not for cooking. You guys heard about trans fats when you heat things up. So you take a good oil with omega, because this has lots of omega-3. You heat that up, it turns into trans fat. So coconut oil is the best one to cook with. You can also use ghee. I don't know if anyone uh, is familiar with that. There's actually a very good cooking oil spray. It's by St. Francis, and it's a ghee and coconut oil combined. And you just spray it into the pan. Very easy to use, uh, best thing. Cheese, good or bad fat? It's solid, room temperature, it's solid, so it's full of what we call the saturated fat. Okay, because we hear about cheese and, and fats, we're talking about cardiovascular health, why is the saturated fats bad? Inflammation goes up. Oh. Immune system does not work well. So this is gonna give you many problems. So the bad fats are going to raise inflammation. The healthy fats, the omega-3, your olive oil, will help reduce inflammation. So it helps your immune system. So, go back to coconut oil, it's a saturated fat too, right? Yes. So, does that mean it's no good? We are simplifying everything, right? So we can debate around good and bad of that for a long time. If we use coconut oil, it has something in it called caprylic acid, and it kills the, the candida. There's different things, different, like, like all traditions and, and nature, different natural things have uh, help us in different ways. It's again, there's different opinions on it. 
Um, some people say it's healthy, it's good, you know, is fat is good for your skin, it'll make your skin look really nice. Oil pulling, it uh, helps. Same idea as here, it's going to kill off the bacteria that's in our mouth and balance this, reduce the inflammation. If you go to your dentist, ask your dentist about the bacteria, in your, the problem in your mouth and the heart. So they're now researchers saying heart attacks and dental health are connected because it's all inflammation, it's all the immune system. What I'm saying about uh, taking um, coconut oil by mouth, well, if you're, if you're living with HIV, you're probably taking one or two pills a day, I'm being sarcastic. You're probably taking a lot of medication. So what I'm saying is focus on eating well and stop taking so many things as supplements. I just want to give you guys some quick details because some side effects, common uh, problems that people have. So when we eat, our food comes down to here and this is our stomach. One of the common things is people have uh, with HIV and the medications is poor digestion and heartburn. So what is heartburn? Is the stomach acid, the stomach juice, going back up to here. We have been talking about coconut oil, candida, good and bad bacteria. That is in this area the small intestines. So the stomach goes directly into here. It's, it's hard to see. It goes into the small intestines. So when we talk about probiotics maybe, or something from yogurt, we're talking about this area. But the bacteria lives everywhere in here. The thing is, we can only change this area. Another thing people have will have either one end constipation or diarrhea, and that is this part. The large intestine, because that controls the water. So, back up here one second. Here? Very little, very little taking in of nutrition. Nutrition comes in here. Here, no nutrition, just water. This controls just the water. And the waste. And it takes the, the waste, the water out of the waste. We need to help the digestive system because we're talking about nutrition. So we, we want to be able to regulate all of this. I'm missing one thing, I'm missing this one. I don't want to talk about it too much. It's the pancreas, if we're talking about insulin, this is more diabetes, that's that. Any of you guys use traditional Chinese medicine? Well, traditional Chinese medicine, we say spleen, is really like this. Okay, because in, in traditional Chinese medicine, if your spleen is not working, digestion is not working. One last thing. Where is your immune system? I'm gonna say it's not 100% true. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a little bit different, an alternative view. Where is your immune system mostly? Is right here your small intestine. There's places in there called prior patches and most of your immune system is there. You guys know uh, up here we have tonsils? Maybe two, three, the adenoids is also up here. We have many of the same idea over here. Many tonsils, we call them prior patches. Things from the outside, where do they go? Do they go into your blood? No, they go in your mouth. Because this, from here to here, is outside your body. So your food comes in, you're taking off the dirt, you're taking the, the raw meat into your mouth. All here is where the bacteria, the virus, things first 
come into our body. Not so often are we cut. So our immune system's everywhere, but I'm saying here, a little bit different of an idea, is probably the most important part of our immune system, and it's the part of the immune system you have the best ability to change. When we eat food, the first part of digesting it, of our digestive system, is something that we don't even think about. And I would say it's probably one of the most important parts of our digestive system. Chewing, exactly, your teeth. Most people don't think about teeth as part of the digestive system. Because if we don't chew our food well enough, it's going to pass down into our stomach and make more work for our stomach. So if we're having digestive difficulties, now we're giving our stomach more work to do. Sometimes it just can't do it. Undigested food passes through to the small intestine. And that's where we get a lot of problems. The food can cause irritation, undigested food. It'll cause little holes in your small intestine. We're not gonna absorb our nutrients. We're gonna have bloating, gas. We're just not going to feel well. It's also going to create that imbalance of the candida. Undigested sugar, carbohydrates, are going to feed that candida. So another thing related to that is to only eat until you're full and then stop. In North America, you know, we get great big portions of food and we feel guilty if we can't eat it or, you know, maybe the food is just so good, we're eating it and we just can't stop, you know, until we get to that point where we're so full, we have to undo our pants and we're really uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, Thanksgiving dinner is, you know, very typical of that. So, when we eat to that point, we're making it very difficult for our body to break down the food. As soon as you feel full, this is when you should stop eating. Even if you have half your plate of food still left over, just save that and have it later when you feel hungry. By doing that, and you'll probably get to notice, you know, maybe you don't need quite as much food, so you don't need that full plate. You'll get to know how much food your body needs. Again, this is going to increase our digestion and make it more efficient. You know, most importantly, we want to make sure that we're taking time to chew our food very well. We want to make sure that by the time we're swallowing the food, there's not that much work for our stomach to do. So by the time it gets to our small intestine, it's not going to cause any irritation, and it's not going to feed that candida. So another tip is to not drink with your meals. This is because our stomach is an acidic environment. Proteins need that acid to break it down. So what happens when we are drinking? with our meal, we're making the, the stomach acid less acidic. You may notice if you've been drinking while you're eating, you feel bloated. It's just because your stomach is having a harder time digesting food. If you wait an hour after your meal to have a drink, or and wait 20 minutes, uh, sorry, yeah, 20 minutes after you've had a drink before you eat, you'll probably notice you don't feel quite so full and bloated. So you wanna make sure that your stomach is acidic to break down those proteins. It's undigested proteins that pass through and irritate our small intestine. So we wanna chew our food really well and not drink with our meals so our proteins are getting digested. Because why do we need protein? Anyone remember? <laughs> muscle, immune system. Yes. Immune system. Yes. Immune muscle, we want to have big muscles, but we want to have a strong immune system. We want to keep making our immune system, making the white blood cells that fight invaders in our body. So we really want to make sure we're digesting our proteins. We also want to chew our carbohydrate foods very well. We can actually digest them in our mouth. As we're chewing, there's an enzyme in our saliva that will break the carbohydrates down. 
So if we chew our food well enough, by the time it gets to our small intestine, there shouldn't be anything to feed the candida. So digestion can be a really important part to increasing your immune system. People say, oh, if I eat so little, I'm okay now, but I'm going to be hungry in, I don't know, one hour. And they, they, this is a problem for them. I say this is a good thing. It's okay that you eat every hour, two hours. It's okay to be hungry, eat regularly through the day. That's how it should be. So you don't, the idea that you eat full and you're good for six hours? No good in the digestion. No good in the digestion, exactly. What, there's lots of kinds of slim tea, so I'm not sure which kind you're talking about. Any. But what, what you're saying sounds like it's gonna, it's a, it's a laxative, it's gonna make you go, mm -hmm. ha have a bowel movement. Yeah. Okay. Right? You're, you're not gonna lose weight this way. You lost your nutrition twice. That's right. Because you didn't get it so well, as Michelle was saying, you didn't get it so well coming in, and then you push it out fast. Why did you eat? Because for the mouth. <laughs> yeah, for the mouth, okay. <laughs> if you're eating for the mouth, then my argument is stop and eat it again soon. You get it twice or three times. I don't keep, it, keep it for the mouth more. If you find that you're feeling really full and bloated and comfortable often, then it might be worth talking to somebody like a naturopathic doctor mm -hmm. because there are options. Um, some people just need a bit of help. We kind of talked about this earlier, just making sure you read labels very carefully. Sometimes there's additives in them, and they will affect your digestion as well. So if, a, a good rule of thumb is, if you can't pronounce the name, then don't buy it. Some long chemical name, it's probably not good for you. So just a few other nutrition tips, just go through quickly. Um, learn to understand your cravings. If you are having sugar cravings, uh, sugar is, again, the food that feeds candida. So if you find that you're really craving sugary foods, talk to a healthcare practitioner. Maybe you have some nutritional imbalances, um, and we can help correct that so your cravings go down, and you can have a more balanced meal. Check your food packages for high fructose corn syrup. Um, this is very bad. It can, people can gain weight from it because the body doesn't recognize it. it. It's not the same form as sugar. So when we have sugar, it turns into glucose, white bread, whatever it is. So what happens, our body releases insulin and it's controlled. Fructose is not recognized in the same way. So glucose does not get released. So what happens, we don't get that message to our brain saying we've eaten enough. So we keep eating because we don't realize we've, we're actually full. So uh, high fructose corn syrup in particular can really trick your body. You can get fructose from fruit, but small amounts of fruit are not going to be the same as having something that's got a large amount of high fructose. We are now maybe starting to have people who are getting older and have been on medication for HIV for 20 years. But we really don't know what that looks like. Medication, all medication, is harder on the liver that needs to process this. High fructose corn syrup is very hard on the liver. Same with preserved foods. So if we're talking about preserved foods, organic, other things, the more we make our liver work, the more problem we have. So we don't know if a person with HIV who's been living on medication for 40 years is start, will start to develop liver problems. We don't know that now. So my philosophy, be careful. Knowing where your food comes from, we've talked about that. Sometimes food can have hormones added to it. You know, cows are fed corn instead of having grass. Knowing where your food comes from is really important, so you're limiting uh, toxins coming into your diet. And lastly, don't skip breakfast. I've heard some people say, oh, I don't really eat breakfast, maybe I'll have a coffee later. But having protein, you'll actually start your day feeling more energized. It will also help to regulate your diet throughout the day and can reduce cravings. So, 
my favorite thing to recommend to people, especially people on the go, is making that protein shake. Because it's liquid, it's easier to digest, you can sip it, you can take it with you, and then you will feel more satisfied, you'll also feel more energized throughout your day. So we have a few things here uh, for people with HIV, so specific nutrient requirements. Um, does anybody know about selenium? Yes, I am. Selenium is a micronutrient, it's a micromineral, and people with HIV tend to be very deficient in uh, selenium. So we find as the HIV is progressing, the selenium is going down. Selenium is very important for the immune system. So one of the best food sources is actually Brazil nuts. And I brought some with me. Um, if anyone wanted to try one, take a look at them. Um, I can pass them around. There are other food sources that have selenium, but Brazil nuts have the highest amount. In fact, for people without HIV, you can actually overdose on selenium by eating Brazil nuts. So if you uh, are adding this, if now you have to be careful if you are taking a multivitamin that has additional selenium, maybe extra selenium in it, then you may not want to have these on a daily basis. So this is an option to try and help reduce the amount of pills you're taking. If you're not taking a multi, if you're not already taking selenium, you can add some Brazil nuts to your diet. Just have a couple each day to, to be able to meet your, um, your requirements. Zinc. Zinc and selenium work together to increase the immune system. Actually, I will say melatonin is the same as well. All three increase the immune system. Fish oil, um, supplementing with the fish oil is a great way to get omega-3 because the toxins have been removed from them, the heavy metals. It's also expensive to get a very good quality fish oil. So, Sardines in water are a really good source of your healthy fats. And also, they have some protein in them as well. So if you want to have a snack and have some sardines, you can get that healthy fat in your diet. You can get a little bit of protein as well. Now we also like sardines because they're small. So the smaller the fish, the smaller the toxic load, or the heavy metal load. So. That's why we recommend, I mean, if you're going to have fish, they say maybe two to three times per week maximum to reduce exposure to the heavy metals. But sardines are a, a safer alternative if you want to have some fish. Oh, because sardines can come in, uh, all, they all come in cans, that's okay. But what I mean is, if you read the label, some have soy oil, some have olive oil, very expensive, that is good too, but very expensive. Some have, they come in tomato juice, all kinds of flavors. So I say, you know, you can get cheap ones and it's just in spring water. You, usually it's in a can. And this is one time I'm okay with it being in a can. Melatonin. Does anybody know what melatonin is? It's a hormone produced in the body that helps us fall asleep. It's also very important because it helps protect us against cancer. The only way we can ha get melatonin, I mean we can supplement with it, is just getting a good night's sleep. But, there's a little hitch to that, you need to be in a dark room, as dark as possible. If you can see, if you put your hand up and you can see it, your room is not dark enough. Because the light interacts with our eye and our body won't produce melatonin. So we need to be sleep in a very dark room and get a good night's sleep to make sure the body is producing melatonin. Melatonin also helps with our digestion as well. So uh, the last thing we have up here, calcium, uh, vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin D for bone health because as we are mentioning, one of the complications, osteoporosis, we always hear about calcium but we don't hear about vitamin D, vitamin K as much. So the best way to get um, all of those, except for vitamin D, is by having basically a big salad. Your dark green leafy vegetables are going to have vitamin K in it. I'll have some vitamin C. Adding your orange yellow colored vegetables, peppers, 
you're gonna get some vitamin C uh, from that as well. And now putting some fat, your olive oil on it because vitamin K is a fat-loving vitamin. You need to have something fatty with it to be able to absorb it. So having a big salad on a daily basis and going out in the sun. Sun, vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. Getting some sun, increase your vitamin D, and then have a big salad with some olive oil. We've tried to keep things where you're not buying and it's with food. I'm going to say there's one thing that if you go to buy uh, one supplement, the one supplement I'm happiest that you buy is a probiotic, right, down here. And this is one time you want to spend money to make it a higher quality probiotic, which generally means there's more types inside and there's more amount, okay? There's some more details, but keep it simple. Why? It means your digestion is better. Probiotic is very important for keeping the immune system regulated. Now that's an important word. It keeps the immune system regulated, not too high and not too low. It keeps the immune system balanced. Without going into too much detail, it's gonna help the immune system behave as it should. And that is the biggest problem for a person with HIV. It's not so much that it's high or low, it's the immune system is now being attacked and it's not behaving like it should. And a probiotic with lots and lots of research, without a doubt, is probably the easiest way to do that. But the other good thing about the probiotic is it helps keep the candida in control. How do we put this all together? We should have protein, some carbohydrates, and some healthy fat with every meal. So having these three main components, and then maybe as a snack, having some Brazil nuts and pumpkin seeds to help get those extra nutrients. Here's a little um, key to help you when you're preparing your food. How much do you need? Because everyone's need is very personal. So fruits, grains, starches, about the size of your fist. What This could also be one slice of bread. <coughs> Vegetables, however much you can hold in two hands. Meat in alternatives, so that's like your protein, your quinoa, the size of your palm. And this is for every meal, so this is a little key to have when you're preparing your food for every meal. Healthy fats, about the size of, they say the tip of your thumb, we'll say the size of your thumb. Another way to look at it. I like this one. So this is what I think a healthy plate looks like. Okay? So look at this. Half is vegetable. Okay? This is one place I'm I am different than the Canadian food guide. Okay? Here, Canadian food guide says about eight servings a day. I say three. Four maybe. Okay? So that's carbohydrates and that's a quarter, 25%. Protein, this is fish. We've recommended sardines, but I don't care. Protein, 25%. So easy. Make this in half, and make those two halves. It doesn't have to be vegetables like this. It could be a salad. It could be any vegetable. Okay? But somebody said it earlier, potato is more like this. Okay? Potato's more of a carbohydrate. So try and make your plate look balanced. So people talk about a balanced meal. What is a balanced meal? I say that's what a balanced meal looks like. Nutrition is great, amazing, but it's not the only thing. So there are other ways to help people with HIV and in general. Because again, what we were doing is trying to give you some tips that you can do on your own. So these are options that you can pair up to do with that. I'm saying the herbal medicine, please, please. This is one time you can have very strong reactions to your medications and can be good or bad for uh, someone with AIDS, not HIV. So do that one with a healthcare provider. The other ones, I'm not so worried about. You know, it's gonna be hard to give yourself acupuncture, but uh, Go ahead. So bone therapy is something between a massage 
and acupressure. So it kind of combines the two. No, it actually moves. It's not pushing. So it goes, it's a it's a, its own system kind starting. Kind of like a massage. Kind of like a massage, but it's it's light and it goes over acupuncture locations. Okay. Dr. Steyer is trained in Bowen and our clinic is 10 minutes from here. Okay, all right. That's good. If you guys have questions, we're happy to come back here another day. And there's been lots of questions. I'm happy to come back. Yeah. Like I said, I, I walked here, so I'm happy to do it. Yes. Right. Thank you, man. Michelle and Joseph, I think this duo is a powerhouse. You know, a lot of questions very interactive. Maybe we can invite Michelle and Joseph back for another session. So let's give another round of applause to Michelle and Joseph. Thank you. And yeah, just a little bit. Thank you. I don't get appreciate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys.